waiting to press the big button. And so the big button has been pressed. And once again, it's Friday. And we may do some buffering. It's whining a little bit. I cleaned up my system before we got started. Well, you know what? Maybe I can kill a couple more programs that we don't need here. We'll figure that one out later. Kill it. What else you got going here? That stuff needs to run. That stuff needs to run. Okay, that's all the normal stuff. <clears throat> we'll see. Might get a little buffering. It's it's whining, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Can you hear me? This is the uh, the new mic setup. I used it for Mike's show on Wednesday. Worked fine, but I haven't used it since then. I always do a mic test before the show, and Obviously, I don't continue unless the test is successful, but there's no real successful test until I, you know I can hear me or I can hear you or whatever the case may be. My warning has gone away, so maybe we solved our problem. Okay. Thank you, Abu Bakr. And good greeting time. Good Friday, everybody. It is Pi Day Friday. And time for drama. Dave Rush, ask me anything. I am Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars. I'm talking to six people right now. Hey, you know what? We should, we should just all hug in a circle and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> we'll get a few more people as the show rolls on. Um, I will tell you guys now, it's going to be a short show for two reasons. Uh, one, my voice is shot. And I figured out why. It's not because my usual long-lasting horribleness. Uh, it's because I'm working till midnight, two o'clock in the morning. And I can't help but get up at 5.30. So you know, if I go to bed at 4, I get up at 5.30. If I go to mid at midnight, I get up at 5.30. It just happens. Sorry, itchy nose. <clears throat> There's supposed to be some superstition about that, but it can't be a good one. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I am pleased to report that my killer project I'm caught up on. There's more coming, but the, the very last one that had me stymied for three days, uh, I was able to complete yesterday. I worked on it for two days to try and get configurations and all that good stuff working. And then finally, okay, everything is configured. Now I just need one piece of information. And so I called Michael Smyer. Uh, he's been on the show before. He is our in-house uh, everything. He writes, he edits, he knows everything there is to know about computer. He's our IT manager. Uh, he is a true genius and his love is PCs and technology. So, <laughs> and he likes to talk about it. So with some fear and trepidation, I said, well, I need Michael. I just need one little piece of information and this thing will be ready to shoot. So called him up and did a back channel voice thing and said, hey, tell me, I need the IP address of a particular machine. He said, oh, sure. Hang on a second. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Click, click, click. Grind, grind, grind. Uh, it's ending in 48. Okay, great. Don't move. Let me test it while I got you here. No, it timed out. No connection. Uh, so I did some troubleshooting from my side. He did some troubleshooting from his side. And we both came up with the same most likely answer at about the same time. Hmm, computer must not be turned on. Uh, now he's not in the office, I'm not in the office. So we had to find somebody in the office who could head down to his office where that computer is, check and see if it's turned on and if it is report and if it's not, get it on. And that was pretty much what happened. Of course, the IP address changed. Nobody knows how long that system had been down for, but uh, just like most computers in our office, it uses DHCP, so it was no longer 48 or whatever it was. So uh, we got the new IP address. Don't move, Michael. Stick with me while I get this tested. Hey, it works like a dream. Cool. So, And then I was so terrified that the thing that I was doing to connect to it would change IP addresses, not of the host that I was connecting to, but the uh, VPN tunnel that I was doing. You can wind up with different IP addresses. And my script says, okay, this is the IP address you're doing. And I, I, I <laughs> hard to explain this one. I didn't want to run the risk of it changing. No big deal to edit the script. No big deal to recognize a new IP address. But 
collectively, when you have to change all three things, uh, there's more reshoots. We wound up uh, doing it in two takes. We do it in two takes? I don't know, one or two takes. One of them we thought it was going to be a one-take wonder, and uh, <laughs> I said something. What was the word supposed to be? I don't know. It was a three-syllable word that starts with R-E-A and has a C-H in there, reenactor or something like that. And I said reaches, and now nah, I'm not going to fix that because it was within the first two or three sentences of the shoot. So cut, let's just do it again. And read the script carefully. All right, ready to go again. And that one happened. So yeah, I think yesterday we did it in one take. Oh, no, we didn't. Now I know what happened. We're, I'm buzzing along. And the way it works is I'm looking at my screen here. I got a microphone kind of set up like it is here. And my screen, my script is on the screen. And then the system we operate on is, is off to my left with a screen facing outward from my left. And my computer operator, usually my missus, is working on it. And everything is going great. Everything looks fine. And, you know, I kind of keep an eye on her face out of the corner of my eye doing one of these things. And she's getting good at computers. Uh, but I could see I'm talking, I'm reading the script, and I'm seeing that look of consternation on her face. And there's no clicking and there's no thing. And I don't stop until she tells me to stop or unless I stop because I've made a mistake. Uh, and But I'm waiting for it. I can feel it coming. And sure enough, she looks over me directly and catches my eye and gives me one of these. And all right, we're not that very deep into it. Cut. Let's see what's going on. And uh, <laughs> there's this utility that we use. You'll see it uh, if you ever get the Sims. Uh, where sometimes you left click it and sometimes you right click it, depending on what you want to accomplish, just like most utilities. And she'd gotten confused. The first time was a, was one kind. The second time was one kind. And the third kind is, eh, you get the idea. So we rehearsed it a couple of times just to make sure it was all down. And then did that one marvelously nonstop. We did one the other night. Oh, should have been simple, but I screwed up once. The missus screwed up once. I'm heck. I might have screwed up multiple times, but as I looked at it after the screw up, we have the international symbol for pause it, but don't stop recording. And so I gave her that. We talked about whatever the mistake was. Here's how we're going to be able to fix it. Give me a five. Give me start it and give me five seconds of silence of count in, and we'll do it again. And so she starts me counts me in. I start cranking. And after about four seconds, <laughs> committed the same flub. Okay, let's do it. Oh, it wasn't the same flub. It was, wait a minute. Did you reset this? I reset the script, but did you reset? Oh, no, we didn't do that. Okay. So let's undo this and reset that. Uh, and then of course, when it's all done, there's a massive amount of editing, but better that I should do it. Cause the way we used to do these scripts uh, is I would shoot them. And then I would make notes about things that needed to be edited. I could edit, I just never realized the program that we were using had a built-in editor and I couldn't edit after the fact the way they want things done upstairs. But once I realized, hey, I, got, I can use the built-in editor here, now I have so much more freedom, I can make more mistakes and not have to start over. Historically, the only way to do these things is start from beginning to end, don't stop, and don't make any mistakes. So the computer operator's got to be perfect. I've got to be perfect. That doesn't happen very often. And usually the mistake is mine. But once we realize, hey, wait a minute, we can make mistakes, we can edit them, we can stop here and reset. Wow, we get a much greater success rate and nobody downstream has to edit anything. Everybody, we have this policy in company and it was set by our, our dear friend who's no longer with us. He said, look, nothing, he was the senior editor of the company. And his rule is nothing goes out of the office for public viewing unless somebody gives it a look over, preferably one of the actual editorial people who have editor skills. But if not, you know, let's give it to somebody who's knowledgeable, at least have them look it over. And so we're doing that policy continues to carry forth in, I'll say it, Scott's absence. And so everything that I do has got to get a once over and then uh, back in the earliest days, we, we did some reshoots because there were some audio problems and things like that. But now it's like a machine. I can crank out somewhere between eight and 10 a day on the high side. And of course, anything less I can do. So we've got 
15 more coming down the pike. But it was really critical to get that one done last night because it completes a product that, <laughs> as you know, things are, are happening quick and fast. And I, I keep checking Udemy uh, for the course to pop up. We've done our part. We are just waiting on Udemy to give it their blessing and then press their big red button and poof, it's up for enrollment. So it's not there yet, but I did check it about five minutes before show started. All right. Yeah, I know. I yammered on and on. Sorry. Sometimes I do that just to occupy time while we get more people to turn up. So let's see who has turned up. Oh, isn't that exciting? Andre beats Tullowit. Well, yeah, if you're going to show up an hour early, he usually shows up a half an hour early, as he did. So uh, you two are the gruesome twosome. Tullowit, I was thinking about our, our late night text conversation last night. DJ Kane. Okay, nice double entendre there. Uh, I don't know how to work that into a radio DJ name, but for a, uh, a party DJ in, in Hawaii land, that is the name. So Will Shaw has returned to the fold. Welcome back, our wayward son. I'm glad things are, are going well. And yeah, I know you said, Jim, you needed some time to do some personal things. And you're caught up. So woohoo. And I'm sure you're working hard. You guys are a little shy on crew members. I'm, ha I'm, I'm half tempted to. No, I'm not. I am. I'm going to turn 60 here in six months or so. And I don't want to screw around with all that stuff. And they don't have ropes anymore. Look it up. What's a rope pilot? And then you'll find out things that are horrible. Anyway, so, oh my gosh, I was able to make drama. Life settling back to normal. After one more week, I should be totally regular again. Cool. Forgotten everything about Net Plus. Time to start over. Speaking of which, if you have forgotten everything that you've ever learned about 220. 1001 and 2000, uh, 220, 1002. It's okay. You don't have to remember it. It's gone. It was retired yesterday. Should have seen uh, all the activity on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel, on the CompTIA Reddit, the people who took a last minute pass or test today. And most people, were, excuse me, reported passing. A few reported disappointing results and pontificated on, man, I shouldn't have even taken it. I should have just abandoned it and used that voucher for an 1101, and maybe you can and maybe you can't. But either way, it's behind us now. There's nothing new coming up down the pike. We'll be uh, probably receiving objectives for the next version of Sec Plus, I would imagine, in the next upcoming months. And the process starts all over. But for us, that window is a wonderful thing. It lets us catch up on some things like uh, like Sims and support products for a lot of the existing stuff, uh, like uh, the video production department, Shannon and her group. They've always got something above and beyond the trifecta in the works. And then uh, when the objectives come in, we sit down for that first meeting and start figuring out, okay, what exists or what still exists in the new book new exam objectives what's been removed what's been enhanced and i usually spend about a week to two weeks working on that and then we turn it over to the writing crews and they start figuring out where the new stuff is going to go in the book and they do that for a week or two and then they start researching and writing that will all happen i imagine in fairly short order <laughs> So that was what that reminded me of, Will. Good to see you back, C210. Andre, that was like the worst wrong answer ever. It's like riding a bike. You need to get back on. You needed to do some kind of networking metaphor there. It's like crimping a Cat 5e cable. You just got to get back on the crimper again and, and switch to Cat 6a. A bike falling metaphor for forgetting network stuff. We get it. Abu Bakr Al Haj. Hello, Dave. How are you? I am very well. I am excited. I am happy. I am so busy for the next 29 hours 
And that's the other reason that we're going to run a short show today. Throat's a little fuzzy and from lack of sleep. And I've got this wedding tomorrow that I'm mostly prepared for, I'm happy to say. Uh, I bought a new mixer board months ago, knowing that over the next couple of months, I will get a chance to play with it and learn the new features and everything. <laughs> you know how busy my schedule has been. I haven't touched it. I even rented it out once a couple of weeks ago so somebody else could learn it. But uh, So last night, after we got that last one shot, I said, you know what, I'm just going to park in here and start messing with this and, and learn the new features. And they're, they're not too complicated. I can live with it. But is it vegan? <laughs> Patricia Grace, ever so wonderful to see you on a Friday. 30 seconds, 10. Oh, you counted it up. <laughs> what? Did you say something? Mike needs a little boost in the mids. It does not. It does not. This is the flattest microphone in production. And the really amazing thing about it, we're going to do mic technology now since you've done it. You take a traditional mic. I put my other one away. Um, here, I got a mic. Everything like a mic over here? Yeah, whatever. We got a mic. Uh, and let's say that I hold it down here and I speak into it and you hear my voice in a particular tone. Now, as I get closer, while my voice doesn't change, there is a thing in microphones called proximity effect that says when you get closer to the microphone, it enhances the bass tones. And so you know, take your standard Shure SM58 or your AKG 800 or whatever, and they all have that pretty much every mic in existence until you start paying in the $500 zone. This guy is flat. I can stick my head inside the element and speak and bring it back out here. And the frequency response is just the same, no matter where you go. So no, it's perfect. I utterly dispute <laughs> your theory. Kumbaya, darn right. Because of the DJ, your voice is shot. Yeah, <laughs> I know I did not return fire, but I will tonight. Full night's sleep. Catherine Legrand amongst the living. Happy pre-Halloween, Catherine. Nice to see you. Killer project. I'm building a pie-based terminator. My wife has made some terminal pies, but that was in the early days when we were still learning to cook and live as two people. Andre's working on Sec Plus. He's got same time frames. Uh, okay. Will Shaw talking to Andre. Will Shaw talking to Andre. Andre talking to Will Shaw. DJ names for the win. DJ Tanner. There's a reference there that I'm not getting unless you, you've been hunting and converting pelts into wearable items. <laughs> Tom's Hardware News posted Microsoft releases PC Manager. I saw that in a different place this morning. There was a lot of places that posted it. Uh, I read very carefully. Uh, and many of the articles are presenting this as if it's some kind of competitor to CCleaner. From what I've seen of it and from the, the, the handful of people that managed to get the beta before Microsoft hit it in the, the Microsoft store, uh, it's not. It's just a, an enhanced version of disk cleanup that may or may not get integrated into Windows Defender. So I don't see anything competitive to see cleaner about it. Nice. Yeah, okay, full house, DJ Tanner. Oh, God. That's thin. That's beneath you. Will Shaw at 218. David Rush is the total SIM product for N1008 all caught up on and ready. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, N1008 is complete and ready to rock. We are working on the final stages of the new 110X Sims. And back in the day, you know, we had a, a cap of 240 and somebody bumped that cap to uh, between 280 and 300. And that's why I'm, my workload is so high now. Yeah, I got it. All right. Well, so uh, sounds like he doesn't know full house. <laughs> Look at my age and, and Tullowit. Okay. I know it as well as Tullowit. Uh, I got bored with it in, in the latter years. 
but uh <laughs> tell what i'm not sure you want to use the phrase my low-hanging fruit <laughs> low-hanging fruit generic cool my low-hanging fruit it brings up images that are going to make me want to go shower <laughs> all right so for those people who've joined us here since the beginning it's going to be a short show it's going to be a one hour show uh i'm moving the project to next week because of voice and workload and exhaustion and 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 sorry about that but so this is open day open topic day it's any question any topic except religion politics and covid and we'll do a contest today and we'll give away a total sim of your choice 110x isn't available yet sorry we're not giving away a total sim uh, we're giving away a total tester of your choice and 1101 is available there Giller was my type eccentric. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, who's the middle one? I can't remember the character names. Can uh, Candace Bergen? Uh, Can, yeah. Candace Cameron's little sister, uh, whoever. The, not the youngest sister. Not the Michelles, but the middle one. Anyways, uh, she turned into a hard rocker, <clears throat> and all the things that go with that. How rude! Yeah, Stephanie. There you go. Joey Sweeten, right. Who apparently was out to disprove any connection to the name Sweeten. She, she was tough and hard and tattooed before tattooing became the thing. And, you know, everybody and their 10-year-old daughter does it now. Hey, yeah, right. Recovering method did the whole ball of wax. All right. Well, let's go see what's in my notes. If there's anything worth sharing with you this fine day, it is Friday, October 21st, which means next Friday is the last Friday of October. So I'll do some kind of a Halloween theme thing back here. We'll see if we can do something Halloween theme. Uh, maybe I'll do the project. Maybe I'll push, push the project back another week and do something Halloween. -y. I don't know. We'll see how, how much time I have. I've, I've got the material ready to go for today's project. I just didn't have time to write it up and uh, test it all in order. Uh, remember that after next week's show, we're going to join up on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel in costume with cameras and mics and just, you know, shoot the breeze, anything, any topic, any topic you want. That's fair game. We don't limit religion and politics on that stuff. Uh, let me get some posts up of info, contact and all that stuff. <clears throat> so you'll know where to go for the Total Seminars Discord channel and so forth. So first and foremost, even though I don't have anything new up this week, let's move this over here. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the Pi R Square server is up. So you can always download the old archive notes and things like that. Here is the current and has been for some time permanent invitation link to the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel where uh, I hang out 24 hours a day. If the computer is asleep, I'm probably asleep. But otherwise, if it's awake or if I'm awake, the computer's awake and you can ping me there. But it's not about me. It's about all the really amazing things that are constantly going on there. Uh, I've been watching, uh, I think, Avanut for the last week or two as, as uh, I don't know that I have permission to identify. So he, she uh, pursues employment with her or his <laughs> new certifications. There's a lot going on over there. I'm not going to describe it all. Come and check it out. It's good, good, good stuff. We got specials available only to people who watch Mike's AMAs and my AMAs because we don't advertise this anyplace else. 50% off uh, and a bundle that you create. Pick a topic of your choice from A+, plus, Net+, plus, Sec+, plus, CYSA+, plus, Pentest+, plus, and AWS Systems Architecture Associate. There we go. Uh, and picked up two items from that. One is the ebook. Each of those has an ebook available. And the matching practice test, Total Tester Online. Put those both in your basket. And then when it's time to check out, use the codes. Good till this Sunday night, Volcano. We are marking the anniversary of the explosion of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79 this week. New code starting Monday morning. 
Yeah. Anybody that curious about it? I got the date and all that stuff. I'll post it because I just feel like that. Did I just wipe it out? Sure did. There we go. Okay. Everything you ever wanted to know about dates involving Mount Vesuvial explosions. And then there's emails. If you would like to contact me outside of the YouTube chat feed today, you can do so either by catching me on Discord or by sending me an email or by contacting me or linking with me or following me on Discord. Links to do all of those things are now postificated. We'll put those up again a little later. All right, what else? Oh, we're going back to notes. <laughs> so I'm still Dave Rush. We get together every week to advance technical learning, often using Raspberry Pis as tools to foster study and prepare for certification exams. This is show, I don't know if I updated that. It might be show 114. Get together every Tuesday, two o'clock, this very time, this very channel, usually two hours today, a short one. And ask questions. We're open to any questions from any technical topic. Our bailiwick is CompTIA certifications. But if you want to go outside that, if I know something about it, I'll be happy to address it. I'll research it. And other people here know lots of stuff. If it's really in depth, then take it on over to the Discord channel, the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. I should cover my legal bases. It's the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel because we have nothing to do with it as far as owning it or operating it. Uh, it's something that was named after the show and uh, we're happy to participate with it. And that's as far as our official connection goes. So there is no official connection. Uh, no project today. Don't have to talk about that. Where we've been, where we're going. What we're going to do next week is finish up the Ansible series by provisioning a host. Okay, I got good newsy stuff this week. We'll do that. Let's see what else has popped up here. Joey still looks good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read that out loud. Not. <laughs> you people. If I said that, the woke police would be so far all over me, I wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> Akil Silvera. Akil. Hey, Chad, does anybody know when Mike's 1101 will be posted on Udemy? Yeah, so we started the show talking about that. Um, we have uploaded everything. It's ready to go. What happens is once we uploaded it, upload it, uh, Udemy personnel look over things just to make sure that it can, uh, complies with all of the platform rules and policies. And as soon as they complete that review, uh, for most courses, it's kind of a one-day thing, but, you know, 1101 and 1102 with, what, 140, I don't know how many episodes are in this one, but uh, collectively, probably close to 200 episodes. Uh, I know they don't look over every word and listen to everything, but whatever their algorithm is, they got to go through it and make sure that there's no violations of their platform rules. And as soon as they do that, they press the big red button and it's go time. So it could be any second now. We've done our part. We're just waiting for them to do their part. We really were anticipating that it went live yesterday. And then I woke up because it didn't. And first thing I checked this morning is, is it live? No, not yet. And five minutes before show, I checked it. Is it live? No, not yet. So we're waiting. Just keep checking every day. I'm going to go Pompeii. <laughs> DJ Pompeii. It's got a nice rhyme to it. <laughs> you won't be cold. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Fire away. <laughs> My pleasure, Akil. All right, what else is in these notes? Okay, so what's what made it in the news this week? There's no major industrial news that I gotta share with you. Just uh, here, what are we talking about here? So I mentioned this last week, but I'm supposed to mention it again. How's that? 
Uh, sometimes I'll, I shill for the company. The A plus 1100 series ebook is available right now. We thought it was, wasn't going to happen until uh, around December. And then, oh, it's going to be November. Oh, it's October. And they called us up one day and said, hey, you can start selling it tomorrow. And then they called us tomorrow and said, no, 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 wait a minute. The issue popped up. Let's research it. And then the next day it popped up and said, yeah, okay, you can sell it tomorrow. And then tomorrow came around and they said, yeah, it's still good. You can sell it. So it is available uh, as an ebook. So go directly to totalsem.com and order that. As far as when the hard copy book goes, the printers are still waiting on paper. There is a worldwide paper shortage. So you can pre-order it from Amazon and it's got the estimated delivery date on there, which is January, February, and I think. Man, that is the best batch of tea I have made in a long time. <clears throat> so I have this note here because I write this about a, a week in advance. Udemy went up yesterday if all went well. So it has not all went well yet. But any second now, any second, another busy week. Uh, there's a surprise assignment. 20 new Sims talked about that. Uh, the stage gig, if anybody followed or care, uh, it went very well. Uh, we did a, a nine platform stage, a 12 by 24 for a band. On paper, it's the easiest gig in the world. We got a trailer loaded up with stage platforms. You hook it up, you drive it up. They're on wheels. So we take it down the ramps, wheel them in, flop them open. And you got to secure them to each other with a nice little flip thing that's real easy. Here's the problem. Stages haven't gone out all through COVID. And so they, they're sitting in this trailer and they pick up a little moisture, uh, which isn't a problem. They're all, they don't rust, but the mold seasons happened twice here. And so they had a, a coating of mold on them of, of pollen, not mold. And pollen grips like epoxy. And our plan was a week or two or three before the gig we would get on there and clean them all off and, you know, clean off the, the dusty surfaces and it never happened. So we said, well, let's go up to the gig early an hour or two, and then we'll take each platform off, scrub it in the parking lot or wherever we unload and then wheel them in. And that's what we did. Uh, that cleanup job added an hour and a half to the gig. But once that was done, yay, now they're good for another year or two back out on the trailer. And uh, it was a really good show. Uh, it was out in the boonies. And it was a midnight pickup. So I always get out there a little bit early uh, so you can get pictures of the crowds and the bands on the stand and all that good stuff. And then we go outside and hang out, read, listen, talk to each other, whatever. And it was, we were so out in the boonies, there was no light pollution, very, very, very little. And it was a, a Texas clear night. And so we watched stars as much as we did anything else. It was beautiful, just a lovely night. Uh, in Magnolia, Texas, we had somebody in here uh, the other day, who is in, is working in Magnolia. So I got the gig this weekend, DJing for a friend's daughter's wedding. Everybody knows I got a nice new shiny microphone. That's perfect. <laughs> I did some work on my Linux daily driver. I set up my Ubuntu One account. So I got the their free security program implemented and running on it. That's kind of cool. And I have always been uh, on the pies, a manual update upgrader. Every Tuesday after I get my morning tasks done, I set aside a, a little bit of time and I log into each one and I do an update upgrade on them. I keep promising myself that I'm going to uh, automate that process and i don't and i do that on purpose uh because if you are the first one to download the latest patch you're the first one to find the latest bug so i, I like to hang out for uh, a little while at least a, a few days before i'll download a new update or upgrade patch the ubuntu system has the same kind of flaws as anybody else. Whenever they issue an update and upgrade, uh, sometimes there are bugs with it. But they have uh, kind of the same thing that Windows does, and maybe Windows does the same thing that Ubuntu does, uh, and that is a live 
go out and find, uh, automatically download them, automatically integrate them uh, for the most part so that you'll never have to reboot or very, very, very seldom. And I have not done that on my Ubuntu boxes in the past. And I finally decided I've got so many Ubuntu boxes going now that it's just adding to my Tuesday list. So I enabled auto patch or it's called live patch. This week, and it's done live patching almost every day or every other day. No problems yet, but I've only been running it for a week. So I'll let you know how that goes. I started playing with VirtualBox on Ubuntu, or yeah, on the Ubuntu system, which works fine. Uh, I am struggling to get a working version of Windows 10 in VirtualBox, and it has to do, the, the computer that I'm using, it's an Intel NUC uh, 10th generation i7. It fully supports Win 10 if you booted hair, bare metal, but it's gagging all over the place under VirtualBox, and I just, I don't have it figured out yet. I haven't put a ton of effort into it, but I shall. All right, let me do a couple more posts, read a couple more questions, and time-wise, right about after that, we will do a contest. So let's repeat some info for the new people that have arrived. How about the Pi R Square server, Rachar, and the Discord invitation to the unofficial Total Seminars Discord server. And this week's specials. I'm not going to post these again at the end. Two times is enough. Discount code is Volcano. Ends Sunday night. And there's Monday morning, there'll be a new code. My email addresses. Today's uh, giveaway contest is going to be a fairly easy. 1101 or 1102 question on virtual machines, I believe. So let's get that kind of pre prepped as long as I'm highlighting and marking things. We might as well highlight and mark that stuff up to right here. All right, everything is all set up. Back to. Oh, lots of stuff got to come up here. GPUs, firewall. Okay, so picking it up at 229. Blue Lantern is here wishing me a happy Friday and happy Friday right back at you, Blue. Has anyone bought the ebook? If so, do you know if there's an app that reads it aloud? Got me there. I've never bought it. <laughs> Will Shaw, hey, Peanut Gallery, now's a good time to buy 3080. Since the 4,000s are out now, it, it's, a, it's still a question of availability. The 4,000s started shipping not last Tuesday, but the preceding Tuesday. And as of Tuesday afternoon, I assumed that they would be sold out at my local uh, micro center. Uh, but Mike checked inventory on Wednesday and said, no, there's some 40Xs installed so, or in stock. So, don't know. Uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday are coming. Buy your GPUs then. Uh, yeah, they will surely be plentiful and available. Reading questions here. <laughs> I'll get it for Christmas or Valentine's Day. Delta's profit sharing payout day. Yeah. Oh, good. Congratulations. Possible payout this year. Black Friday is. It, 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 it's all, it's losing its meaning. Black Friday sales started a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Blue Lantern, I took an astronomy class and learned about something called the Texas Star Party. Have I ever attended? I have not attended. I am aware of it. I certainly know people who do attend it. Attend it. I guess that's not 100% true. We did attend it uh, when Mars made its close pass. Kind of, sort of. I know a guy, he's selling a big scope, a 16 inch. And I'm really happy to buy a 12 inch. He's got a 16 and we never talked money because the day I went to him to talk money, he said, hey, there it is. Uh, some guy put it on layaway. And next time I see him, it, it's been sitting there for weeks. I don't know how long this person is going to have it on layaway, but 
uh, I am ready, willing, and able to buy it out from under him. The, there only is one challenge with a 16-inch telescope. Where do you keep it? I mean, it's a monstrous thing. It's, it's, it's a third of the size of a car. So, and just toting it around, it's not something you do. Uh, reading here. First rule of Texas Star Party. <laughs> I get virtual fingerprints on it. Shame on you. Oh, yeah. So my junk. The special deals are hot this week. They are Volcano is a local brand store here. Really? I mean, you know, how many stores and, and businesses must there be in Hawaii named Pineapple, Kona, as in the coffee, Banana, Cane and Volcano. I bet we just named off half of the incorporated name partials in Hawaii. <laughs> Volcano is a town name on the big island. Hello, on route. Hello, right back at Yell Route. Hey, Mr. Rush, how did you overcome imposter syndrome? It's something we all do. Um, okay, so everybody has some degree of imposter system. And I think that's a terrible name. You are not an imposter. When you present yourself at an interview or with credentials, you present them with your best face forward. You might also embellish a little bit. Uh, and then there comes this fear that says, oh, man, what if I got hired because of those embellishments and I'm really not that qualified? Well, look, HR people are not dumb. Business owners are not dumb. They recognize embellishment, and that's why they interview you, and that's why they ask you the questions that they do. And they know that when you're coming in the door, for the most part, nine and a half out of 10 employees have enough qualifications that they can do what needs to be done and can learn the rest from a mentor in the organization, a boss, uh, a coworker, whatever. So how do you overcome it? You never stop studying. You never stop learning. Take advantage of the education and information of a place that uh, wants to offer it to you. Learn it. Keep trying. Go read more about it. Don't just, uh, okay, Fred said always do it this way. I'm going to go home tonight and read about why this is a good way. What are some other ways? Let's talk to Fred about it and, and get deeper understanding. It doesn't take long before you are as qualified as you said you were on your resume and in your interviews, and you will begin to exceed that. So it's practice, it's continuous study, and it's doing the things that you say you know how to do until you can do them so well that you don't have to think about them, that you don't have to research them anymore. Practice, practice, practice. Same way you get to Carnegie Hall, right? Love to build an observatory in the backyard. Too many trees around my backyard. If, when we get done with this place, we will move out a little uh, to a place with a little more space and a little more, a little less light pollution. And uh, I don't think I'll put up a dome structure, but uh, it is a, uh, I wouldn't call it an avocation, but it is a, a, a favorite hobby of mine since college. <clears throat> Fake it till you make it. Mm. Never been a fan of that approach of things. What do you think of Graphene OS? I am not familiar with it. How's that? But you have me intrigued, Thomas. So quick 14 seconds of research. Let's see, which browser, this browser. Oh my gosh. Well, that's part of where that came from. Graphene OS, I have heard of it. But I know that I've never actually used it. Why? Because it's probably not available to run on Raspberry Pi. What is the big key to Graphene OS? Private and secure mobile operating system. Focus mobile OS with Android app compatibility. It's a super Android. Nonprofit. It's an Android replacement that's Android compatible. Uh, I think it's interesting. 
Mike is the guy who loves to play with changing out OSs and firmware in Android devices. Came from Copperhead OS. There was a schism on licensing and the 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 the. 95 Google source to graphene. I think I've, I've, I've got the general gist. It's a, it's an alternate for Android focuses on mobile devices and is Android app compatible. So I think it's interesting. Um, I've never encountered anything on Android that didn't work, that didn't do what I wanted to do, that didn't exist. And so I think for me, and it doesn't fit my hobby. It does, that doesn't fit my, my use case. I like what my Android devices do. I don't need them to do more than what exists out there. So I wouldn't pursue it. But for some people who just like to install new stuff and see what's available and tinker with it, that's what I do with PCs. That's what I do with Linux. But it, I've just never had any appeal to go pursue that on Android. Well, I'm root. I'm a cyber analyst learning cyber analyst things. <laughs> okay. If you're a cyber analyst. You should be looking at SOC. Thanks, Abelbacher. And you're so welcome. Mickey D's. Took me a while to figure out that one. Uh, how different do you think 1101, 1102 exams are from 1001 and 1002 exams? I've been studying the 1000X exams, but I have to take the 1100s now. Yes, you do. Um, they are somewhere between 25 and 40% different if you were to put a hard number on it. Now, you can't just quantify it with a number and, and have it make sense. So let's recognize a few things about the differences. One, there's about 25% new material, brand spanking new new topics and subjects. About 25% of the obsolete material is taken out, okay? We don't need to talk about coaxial cable ethernet anymore. They finally got rid of that. Um, so new material added, old material removed, existing material enhanced, okay? So some devices, some products like USB has been updated since 10OX. So USB is still in there as a topic, but now we got to talk about USB 3.1, I'm trying to remember here, generation two, version two, whatever that is. And now the new Wi-Fi is right. We've changed the nomenclature on them. There's some new terminology for old stuff. So that's all there. So there's three pieces. And then the fourth piece, this is the biggie. They have... They do this all the time and they do this in all the courses. Every time they come up with a new set of courses over the three year span, a, a new A plus, a new net plus, a new sec plus. How are we doing on time here? Okay, I might run a hair long, but I'm not gonna run much over an hour if I do. Uh, understand how this works before I can give you this last part. CompTIA is a lobby group, all right? They are a computer lobby group. They exist because a bunch of Computer technology vendors got together, Microsoft and Novell and HP and lots of software applications, thousands and thousands of companies pay dues to this organization. And this organization takes that money and the first and foremost thing that they do with it is they go bang on the doors of congressmen and senators and policymakers and say, hey, this is what our industry can do if you will develop regulations and approvals and whatever's to make that possible. They lobby the government on behalf of these companies. Uh, and then there's leftover money and the companies once got together and said, you know what, uh, we're HP. We have an HP technician certification organization. And IBM said, you know, we do too. And so did Acer and so did, so did. And so they said, hey, CompTIA, Find all of the commonality in our certifications and create a set of objectives for a universal technician. That's what the CompTIA certifications are all about. It started with A+, the first universal technician certification. And then HP didn't have to have their own educational development department, and neither did Acer, neither did IBM, and so forth. 
then they get together with all these vendors and say, what, Mr. Vendor from HP, do you think is important for a tech to know? Same thing, Miss IBM. Same thing from this other company. And they get together and they say, well, you know what? Uh, our technicians, we're, we're concerned that they're going to turn up at somebody's house wearing ripped jeans and not having shaved for two days and not having put deodorant on for five days. So we want a set of specs that identifies uh, what a, a, a technician should present, right? How to dress well, how to smell nice. And that's actually test questions in there. And so along the way, every year they do surveys of all these companies, what's important to you and your customer base and for your technicians to do this year. And so many of them came back that said, the world is moving from the standalone PC. Yeah, we all have them, but business and industry and our primary customers, they are looking at things and, and implementing things at an enterprise approach, with an enterprise approach. And so after lots more surveying and questioning and research, they built lots of new objectives that says, stop thinking like a person going into somebody's house and going to fix grandma's computer or Joe entrepreneur's computer or his, his handful of three or four computers, businesses are becoming more structurally configured like an enterprise. And so we are watching, we have watched Net Plus add a lot more emphasis and focus on the enterprise world and ditto for A+. And very little of that stuff existed in 10OX. And that's one of the reasons that we say, look, you, you can't study the 10OX material and expect to do well on 11OX. There are people who have done that, but it's all, these people also are using additional resources that they don't fess up to, or sometimes they do, or they have uh, jobs that expose them to this kind of information. It is our belief that if you're going to take the 11OX exams and you're not working every day with Windows 11 and enterprise world, you're going to need 11OX study materials. I know, it's the old mic joke. Ask me what time it is, I'll tell you how to make a watch, but there you go. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up as soon as I, I threw out the name Mickey D's. Graphene OS, if Thomas understands it correctly, Android without Google and all apps are sandboxed. Okay. Only available on pixels. There you go. And you can install Google if you want it. Yeah, yeah Google's an app. Uh, Thomas, hey, you like Raspberry Pis, right? Have you heard about Diet Pie? Of course I love it. I have heard about Diet Pi. Um, I have no interest in it. Diet Pi is Raspberry Pi OS that has underused items stripped out of it. So it makes it a, a little more compact on the hard drive and memory. Um, it's fine if you're going to create a single use Raspberry Pi and you don't have much resources in that pie. This is the piece I think that most people kind of avoid. I see people on the, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I hate when I do these brain parts. It's happened like three times in the last three weeks. Maybe I got it my, get myself checked out. All right, I'll look. Ah, whatever. Um, I have to look. I must look. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to say it and then, oh, yeah, duh. All right, right over here, it is, I yeah, know the pie hole. Thank you. Uh, so I see people on pie hole forum talk about how they install it on diet pie all the time. And, and one of two th things happens about that. One, it works. Okay, that's fine. I think that's a great thing. Uh, if diet pie has enough structure and support, and content and, and whatever to run a particular application such as Pi-hole, cool bananas. Now, why did you do that? Are you running it on a Raspberry Pi 3? You never needed to. 
It, it's silly. If you're going to run it on a Raspberry Pi Model A or Model B with their 256 and 512 uh, megs of RAM, Diapi is a pretty good thing. But as soon as you start playing Raspberry Pi 2 with its gig and everything above has a gig, why? I will never understand that. So there's my take on it. It's fine. It has its place. But I think it's often used in wrong places or for wrong reasons. It's not going to run any faster. It's not going to run Pi Hole any faster than if I ran it on full fat Raspberry Pi OS. Observations are overrated unless you're looking at the sun. <laughs> All right. So how about the fast food OS? So Andre introduced me to the phrase fast food OS. Um, and it's related to Mickey D's and runs on computers that are named after fruit. All right. That's as far as I'm going to take that. Meat pie. <laughs> it should be a fruit pie, right? Or, or fruit cake. You fell in the draft. <laughs> Universal Technician starring Jean Claude Van Damme, straight to VHS to be sure. En route. Eventually, CompTIA will need a picture of my bathroom to become a tech. <laughs> yeah, that's not impossible. FPV, CompTIA only wants a picture of your credit card. <laughs> Okay, so Pi Zero's uh, got 512, might be fine for Diet Pi and Pi Hole, but recognize also that Pi Hole is not officially supported on Diet Pi. That's something that somebody said, hey, I'm just going to take uh, Raspberry Pi OS and start ripping it apart and leave in what I think is an acceptable amount of content. Meat pies, yep. Good breath. All right. Well, let's do a contest here. We're kind of winding up three minutes to go in the hour. It'll take us over just a hair. Uh, who's here? Anybody? Yeah, the usual crowd. So we're going to do a contest. Winner gets 90-day free access to any total tester of their choice that we have to offer. To find out what we have to offer, go to totalsem.com. Take a look at our merchant area and all of the total tester products. Uh, winner today, you need to contact me today before end of business so I can get that into the hands of the appropriate people and they will handle it first thing on Monday morning, usually. Um, <laughs> I don't know about this Monday. They uh, are heavily involved in this wedding that I am involved with this weekend. So uh, these things tend to run headacheville. And we got football coming up on Sunday and as, as part of recovery. It should be fun. All right, let me get a question up here. Uh, the general principle is I post a question. It's a uh, one answer, multiple choice. The answers are long. You got to type in the answer. I don't have A, Bs, or Cs, or Ds. You get to type in your answer one time. You don't, you don't get two uh, whacks at the wheel. And I pick the winner that makes me happiest. And the winner that makes me happiest is someone who's got the right answer and has not won a whole bunch of times. So if you've won two or three times, and somebody else has the right answer after you do, and they've only run once or never, I'm going to give it to them so we can kind of get more winners out of the crowd here. Now, if you're the only one and you've won 10 times and nobody else has that right answer or somebody else has won 10 times, you were first, you win. Demon barber of the fleet. All right, let me back that up. Let me dig out a question here. Uh, weekly special winners. All right, there is the question. I know you can't see it yet, but you will. Hmm. Okay, I can't do it that way. Oh, but if I do this, look at that. Okay, close enough. I might miss a word here as I read this thing off, but we can live with it. Now we share. Let's click that, click this, and share screen. Here comes today's contest giveaway question. It's a multiple choice question. I will give you four possible answers. You type in the 
answer that best answers the question. Ready? Here goes. Multiple choice. This is a question from the 220-110X question pool from Total Tester. Type in the correct answer. Don't type in A, B, C, or D. Type in one answer and one answer only. Which of the following is an advantage of a virtual machine hosted on a PC? You have four choices to select from. It reduces the training required for employees. It reduces the amount of physical hardware required. It reduces the amount of RAM required on the host PC. It reduces the power of the CPU required on the host PC. Let's go back and hit that question one more time. Which of the following is an advantage of a virtual machine hosted on a PC? Reduces the training required for employees. Reduces the amount of physical hardware required. Reduces the amount of RAM required on the host PC. Reduces the power of the CPU required on the host PC. I am looking at answers. Uh, your submitted answers in the YouTube chat area. Swiney Toad likes them. I'm here and listening. Cooley's here. I mean, the ones on Sunday. Okay, there's our first answer. Hmm. I got to check something. I'm checking things and checking and checking. No, not you. You can't check there, foolish man. Let's try that again. This. Okay. All right. That looks good. And let's do this. Still looking for answers. Looking. Just because you see somebody's answer up there who may or may not be right, if you think they're right, you can still put yours up because you may have won less times than they have, assuming you're right. Everybody's got the same answer. I told you today was easy. <laughs> so everybody's right. And so now we, <laughs> except Will Shaw, 701. 1701 F, huh? <laughs> I guess they're going to shoot that one. Uh, they they announced that they weren't going to shoot the new Star Trek, and now they've announced that eh, we are. All right, let me put up the official right answer, and then we'll go pick somebody out of that list. The official right answer is... Correct answer, reduces the amount of physical hardware required. Sure, the point of a virtual machine is if I wanna run three different operating systems, I could buy three computers and have all that three different CPUs and three different sets of RAMs and three different monitors and, 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 or one computer and install as many virtual machines in there as my system will support. An unlimited number if you're only willing to, to run one at a time or if your machine has lots of RAM and lots of CPU horsepower, RAM being the biggie, biggie, biggie when it comes to CompTIA questions, then you only need one computer. So with virtual machines, one machine, one computer can run virtual, multiple virtual systems. So I want a powerful machine, but one powerful can take the place of many less powerful machines. And that's an energy savings as well as a space savings and a general expense. I'm not gonna read those incorrect answers to you. Download my, uh, my notes, if you want those, it's in the notes. All right, our winner. Um, if you've won before, I don't remember it. And if you have won before and I don't remember it, it means it hasn't happened very often. So our winner this week, on route, I am root. Uh, reduces the amount of physical hardware required. That was good fast typing to get in there with uh, first answer and all that text. You must be a, a fairly good touch typist. Well done. That's always an entree to potentially find work in total seminars. We need people who can write. Uh, and fast typing goes a long way with that. Uh, if you didn't win. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So posting how to collect your winnings. I'm root. Please copy and paste what I just posted at four minutes past the hour. Uh, and send that to me. I need four pieces of information in the body of the email. No exceptions to this. It's got to have your YouTube name. I'm underscore root. Your actual name, your uh, first name and surname. 
your email address. I can't use the one in the header. I need an email address in the body of the email and which practice test you want by exam number. So if you want uh, the Network Plus practice test, you're gonna tell me N10008. If you want AWS Systems Application Architecture, or Architecture Associate, whatever that is, AWS 002 or SAA 002 or whatever, CO2. I don't know what they all are. <clears throat> you get the idea. Send me that, get me to that, uh, that by uh, end of day, if you please, and that will really make my life easier and the people who handle this stuff easier as well. All right, last questions, last things to come up with here. FSB, <laughs> FSB as a service, all right. Uh, Cooley McCoolson, such a good name. Our route has five, I'm route has fiber optic connection. Sure, congrats. Sec plus one doesn't get rotated out until next year. Um, I don't know the official retirement date. Uh, look that up on CompTIA and then add six months to the retirement date for the crossover period that the old one will still work while the new one is also in effect. Uh, I'll get that answer for you uh, or have Mike answer for you on Monday. If you don't have the answer by, by next Friday, I'll give it to you next Friday. What's important to think about, says Thomas, when choosing hardware to build a machine dedicated to virtual machines. The number one answer for CompTIA purposes is quantity of RAM. Number two is CPU horsepower. Andre de Goyer, I believe, while those are both true in order of priority, for the sake of CompTIA, reverse them. RAM first, CPU next. All right, well, let's wind this puppy up. It has been great to see you. We, uh, we'll do this once more, yeah, one more in October. And again, next Friday is the Halloween episode. Nothing special for you to do. I may or may not do something special as a project that we shall see, but the set will definitely be decked out and dressed because it's one of my favorite decorating holidays of the year. Upcoming episodes, astrophotography, with uh, our 64 megapixel Arducam when light and weather and conditions are conducive. Uh, let's, uh, let's encrypt to the Apache server and the last piece of uh, Ansible. So sorry I couldn't do that today. Again, just way too busy this week and today to make anything good happen. I'm, I'm sorry, but I will leave the uh, server up all weekend, pirsquare.zapto.org, P-I-R square. .zapto.org. Somebody said they couldn't get into it last week on Discord because they were using HTTP. You can use HTTP. It'll automatically redirect to HTTPS. Uh, we should have Steve Nicholson on next week. Uh, Monday and Wednesday, Mike will be doing his regular shows. Hopefully one of them with Steve. Uh, on tap, we got Doug Jones coming up from uh, supporting Ethernet, uh, the Ethernet network on the International Space Station. And with that, let's wind things up. So as ever, and always my thanks to Mike Myers, everybody at Total and National Cyber Group who so generously provide us with time and resources for us to get together here every week. My most heartfelt thanks goes to you and everyone who comes here to participate. This has been Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident Pi specialist wishing you as always a great weekend. Take care of each other, take serious steps to stay healthy. And if at all possible, call or visit your parents. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resources we have are you and I. And with that, I will bid you good evening. I'll pop over on Discord channel for a couple minutes. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you at the AMAs next week. And until then, I am out of here. <clears throat>